Welcome everybody, my name is Robius, and today I have a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History to share with you all. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, beware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be taking a look at the 11th Grand Master of the Knights Templar, Rabal de Sable, or as he is also known, Rabal de Sable. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you his pre-game history, which will inform us on his background prior to AC1, then his in-game history, which we see depicted in the game, and lastly we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of the individual's life. Starting with the pre-game history, Rabal de Sable was born on an unknown date in the 1100s to a military family in the Anjou County of France. His mother was la Dame Ersan d'Antonaise, and his father was Robert III de Sable, and therefore, as his son, he was technically named Robert IV de Sable. Through his familial nobility, he received a lordship and inherited his lands in the 1160s. He married Clémence de Mayenne, and together they had a daughter named Marguerite de Sable, who would later inherit his title and lands after his death. During his adulthood in the 1170s, he lent his political support to Henry the Young King, as he appeared to be the heir for the Kingdom of England and the Duchy of Normandy. However, when a militaristic revolt took place in 1173 and lasted until 1174, where Henry's forces tried to defeat his father, Henry II, chaos broke out. Eventually the revolt was quelled and Henry the Young King was defeated. Despite this crushing loss by his ally, Robert continued to support the Angevin kings. In 1190, following the death of Henry II and the ascension of the new king, Richard I, Rabal made a point to donate money to the monarchy to better his relationship with the royalty, following his failed support of the revolt. In this time, Rabal joined the ranks of the Knights Templar and rapidly grew in importance within their numbers. As a servant of the crown, he led King Richard I's naval forces from Normandy and England into the Mediterranean, where they were successful in a military campaign, which helped to increase Rabal de Saab's reputation among the nobility. He also participated in battles in Portugal, Sicily, and Spain. These victories aided his reputation with Richard, who subsequently aided him in reaching the rank of Grand Master of the Knights Templar. With the outbreak of the Third Crusade, Robert and the Templars, along with the rest of the Crusader armies, were soon deployed to the Levant to fight against the Islamic forces of the Sultan Salah ad -Din. After arriving in Cyprus and following the death of the former Grand Master, Gérard de Ridefort, Robert officially became a member of the Order, and within less than a year of membership, he was elected as Grand Master of the Order of the Temple in June of 1189. It would be around this period of his life where we first met Robert in the first Assassin's Creed game, where he was serving as the leader of the Templars during the Third Crusade in the Middle East. During the Crusade, some of Robert's more important military campaigns were during the Siege of Acre, which the Crusaders finally took following some extended fighting. Although this was one of the more important victories for the time, the Templars also participated in the capturing of various fortresses around the Mediterranean coast in the name of the Europeans. These effects could be seen in the first Assassin's Creed game as the Crusaders held the city of Acre and divided its security between the various orders of knights. One of the Third Crusade's greatest military successes was during the Battle of Arsouf on September 7, 1191, when they faced off against the armies of Salah ad -Din. When the conflict began, it seemed that the Islamic forces were going to be victorious. However, the Crusaders came together and through the forward action of the Knights Templar and Knights Hospitalier, who broke through the Sultan's ranks, the Europeans were eventually successful. This marked one of the more important victories for the Crusaders, since they were truly in need of a morale boost. Evidently, this was not showcased in the same way in Assassin's Creed, where he was trying to make an alliance between the Saracens and the Crusaders against the Hashashin. In late 1191, King Richard I, the Lionheart, sold the Crusader-held island of Cyprus to the Knights Templars so that it may serve as their new base of operations, technically independent from the Crusader bases. The Templars held the island for two years, however, they failed to successfully establish themselves a foothold, like the Hospitaliers had done on Malta. Therefore, Robal subsequently sold the island to the technical King of Jerusalem, Guy de Lusignan. Robal later died in 1193 from unlisted causes, however it is generally assumed that it was from old age, since most historians believe him to have actually been 60 years old at the time of his death. In summary, the differences between Robal de Saab's actual life and his representation in Assassin's Creed began with the conflict in the Temple of Solomon that continued on to Masyaf. There was no official record of the Templars discovering the Temple of Solomon, however it has been heavily believed by historians that it may have been possible, and therefore we cannot technically say that any such confrontation took place. Secondly, although he was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar, there aren't any records of him hunting the Hashashin and Masyaf, or having any confrontations with an assassin who came for his life. Thirdly, the extensive network of Templars that Robach commanded in the game was fictional. The only Templars were the official knights within the Order, which did not include any Serrations or members of the Knights Teutonic or Hospitalier. Fourthly, prior or following the Battle of Arsouf, Robal did not try to negotiate peace between the Crusaders and the Serrations with the goal of wiping out the Hashashin. 
Fifthly, the game demonstrated him to be in his early to mid-adult life, when in reality, historians believed him to have been in his 60s during this time period. Lastly, Rabat was not killed by Altair following a duel with him in front of King Richard, but instead it is assumed he died of old age. It could be considered that in reason of the vague records concerning his death, that he made a great target for Altair in the game. However, even with these changes, Rabat de Salle was rather well represented in Assassin's Creed, and the vague parts of his history were greatly utilized to further the game's plot. And with that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for more episodes, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ironic, isn't it? That I, your greatest enemy, kept you safe from harm. But now you've taken my life, and in the process, ended your own.